Welcome back. In this last lesson in our database series, we will look at database transactions. In this lesson, I'll look at an imaginary example of a music festival to use that as the context for looking at what transactions are. The checklist for good transaction processing, which has the acronym ACID, and a number of safety measures that we can use with databases to ensure that the, the data and the transactions are protected. So it's just an imaginary example. Uh, imagine that there's going to be a music festival in your hometown. My students live in Nun Nuneaton, so I've called it Nunstock. Tickets are about to go on sale. They're expected to sell out immediately you've been asked to advise the organisers of Nunstock about arranging safe and effective transaction processing. Take notes as we find out more. This lesson is all about transactions. As you know, a database is a collection of data stored in tables. A transaction is any event that changes data in the database that might involve a, a single transaction might involve data from several different tables. For example, when you use a cash point to get money out or uh, if you bought a ticket to non-stock festival, if you ordered products online or interacted with social media, these are all examples of transactions because they change the data that is stored in some database somewhere. There are a number of problems. There are a number of problems that can occur with transaction processing. For example, two transactions could occur at the same time, um, uh, which affect the database in different ways. For example, if there's only one ticket left and two people apply for to buy it at the, exactly the same time, how is that resolved? Uh, a, a problem that can arise from things like this is that one transaction could overwrite a previous transaction. So I've bought the ticket, then you log on a, a few moments after me and buy it and that overwrites my purchase. Something that happens quite a lot with internet connections is you can get halfway through a transaction and then the connection can fall over and then the transaction is half completed. For example, worst case scenario, you might have paid for something for an item and then the connection fails before they take your details for delivering the item to you. And of course, there's the ongoing problem of hackers and uh, people trying to commit fraud. And these, particularly a database that's got money in it, that's a, that can be quite a big problem. So you can probably think of other problems that can occur with transaction processing. And all of these problems with transaction processing can lead to businesses losing money or getting a bad reputation or even ha getting into legal difficulties. So it's very important that the organisers of non-stock or any other transaction processing requirement that it's uh, designed to avoid those problems that I just talked about. There's a checklist with the uh, acronym ACID uh, that reminds you of how transactions should be processed. Each transaction should be atomic, consistent, isolated and durable. Let's look at what that means. Transactions should be atomic. That, uh, uh, that means they can't be split. They're either true or false. So a transaction either has succeeded or it has failed. You can't have a half completed transaction. Basically, if you get halfway through a transaction and your internet connection crashes, then the whole transaction is a write-off. Uh, th the transaction should be consistent. They should be consistent with each other, so they can't contradict each other, and they should be consistent with the database, the rules of the database that you're interacting with. They should be isolated that means that each transaction either succeeds or fails on its own it shouldn't start 
being affected by other people's transactions. So if I'm buying something through Amazon, my purchase shouldn't be affected by anybody else's purchase. Uh, I'd be very worried if it w if it was. And finally, they should be durable. That is, once I've performed a transaction, it stays in place unless I specifically do something to cancel it out or reverse it. OK, so my my purchase won't just suddenly disappear from the database. And in order to ensure that we don't get into trouble with our transactions, every database application is surrounded by various safety measures. And I'm just going to quickly go through these referential integrity, which we've already mentioned in a previous lesson, record locking, input verification and validation, the use of secure procedures by people working with the software and the concept of data redundancy. Referential integrity is a rule in good database design, which means that you can't delete data which is in use in another part of the data, uh, in another part of the database. So, for example, I can't delete a customer record if there are transactions in my database that relate to that customer. There are two options. One is that if I do have to delete data, I have to go round the rest of the database and find all the links to that data to make sure I'm not en I don't end up with a broken link. Or the alternative, and this is what people usually do, I mark the data as not currently in use. For instance, the word obsolete or out of stock or something like that. And uh, instead of delete, absolutely deleting it. So I don't know about you, but I went back to my Amazon order list and I found way back years ago, I've got orders in place for items that are, are no longer in stock. For instance, old pieces of computer equipment that aren't for sale anymore. But my orders for those things have not been deleted. They're still in my Amazon record. They're just marked as um, out of stock no longer available. In order to prevent some of the problems that I talked about earlier, uh, transaction processing usually involves record locking. That means that while a transaction is underway, the, the record is locked. Nobody else can buy that item uh, or, or whatever the transaction is and no other transactions can affect what I'm doing until my transaction is completed. Furthermore, if the transaction fails part way through, because the record has been locked, the database just goes back to how it was, so I'm not left with a half completed transaction. Quite often in a transaction, we have to input some data and if that data is input incorrectly, for instance, if I accidentally spell my own name wrong and we've all done things like that, made silly typos, you end up with data that is not, that can't be used properly. And there's a computer saying garbage in, garbage out. That means if you put garbage into your database, the results in your database will be garbage, will be, in other words, worthless. A couple of ways that we can try to screen out errors before they uh, get into our database is validation and verification. Let's look at those one after the other. Verification means that we enter important data twice and the two versions should match. You may be familiar with this we often use verification when you change your password. You have to enter your new password twice. And often when you have to enter your email address, you have to enter the email address twice. The alternative to verification is validation. And this doesn't require entering the data twice, so it's faster for the user. Um, we set up various checks inside the computer software 
we're telling the computer what type of data to expect or for example the range of acceptable answers and the computer will check every input to make sure it it matches our validation criteria this this doesn't eliminate all errors but it does eliminate some of them furthermore we can build in security procedures to protect the data on our system and i'm just briefly going to review them uh, a firewall, we'll talk more about firewalls um, and biometrics in another lesson a few weeks time. The use of passwords and the enforcement of appropriate, safe and sensible professional behaviour by the people who work with the computer systems. And the other thing that we do is we uh, often take extra copies of the data. This is different from what I was saying before that we shouldn't ever replicate data inside a database. This is separate from the data, uh, from the database, a, a backup or a mirror of the database. Large companies, large tech companies will have a lot of mirroring. Every piece of data stored on Google or uh, Microsoft OneDrive, all of this will be mirrored and backed up many times. So it's ultra secure. So you should now know what transactions are. Be aware of some of the risks of things that can go wrong with transactions, how we protect ourselves against those using the ACID checklist and a range of different safety measures. So here's your here's the activity that I'm leaving you with. Write a briefing for the organizers of Nonstock Festival because after all they're probably quite musical and artistic types and they may not be computer experts. That's why they've hired you to advise them. So explain the need for secure transaction processing and make some recommendations about things they could do to keep their data safe. Okay, I hope that was useful. That's the end of the four lesson series on database design. Next week, we're going to look at SQL, the database programming language. So bye for now.